out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Be viewing the outpouring for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on me. Good day, viewers. Welcome this day that the Lord has made to the program, The Outpouring. Last week on The Outpouring, we spoke about the fire, all different fires. And today, I will continue a little bit more along that fire. And while I was on my way to the studio this morning, there was this song that came to my spirit. And it goes like this. Let your fire fall, let the wind blow, let your glory come down. Let the fire fall, let the wind blow, let your glory come down. And a lot of times uh, when the fire of God is ignited in a place uh, and the wind blows, truly the Spirit of the Lord and the glory of God comes down. I want to share with you today um, on two, two other accounts uh, where the fire fell and one is with Gideon and the other is with Samson's parents. And then we will continue into another aspect of the program. So I'm going to read today from Judges chapter 6 where Gideon becomes Israel's king. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, so the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, in the caves, and in strongholds. Wherever the Israelites planted their crops, Mirandas from Midian, Alemelech, and the people of the east would attack Israel camping in the land and destroying crops as far away as Gaza. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. These enemy hordes coming with their livestock and tents were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camel, too numerous to count, and they stayed until the land was stripped bare. Isn't something like that wanting to happen now? So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. And this has always been a story of Israel. They get themselves into trouble. They cry out to the Lord and God in his grace and mercy would help them. And then after a while when things get normal and it goes, begin to prosper and they're okay, they forget about God and go their way. And in a sense, we tend to also be like that. When they cried out to the Lord because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you up out of slavery in Egypt. I rescued you from the Egyptians and from all who oppressed you. I drove out your enemies and gave you their land. I told you, I am the Lord your God. You must not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live, but you have not listened to me. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah which belonged to Joash, the clan of Abiezer, Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of the wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty man, hero, the Lord is with you. And I could imagine Gideon, here he was, hiding in the wine press to thresh grain so that the Midianites wouldn't come and attack him. He was, he was really weak, hiding, all that sort of thing. And this angel came and the angel called him mighty man. In other versions, they said, oh, mighty man of valor. So obviously Gideon will look around because surely they're not speaking to him. Sir so Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? 
and where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about didn't they say the lord brought us up out of egypt but now the lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the midianites then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh and I am the least in the entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Gideon replied, if you are truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that it is really the Lord speaking to me. Don't go away until I come back and bring my offering to you. He answered, I will stay here until you return. Gideon hurried home. He cooked a young goat and with a basket of flour, he baked some bread without yeast. Then carrying the meat in the basket and the broth in a pot, he brought them out and presented them to the angel who was under the great tree. The angel of God said to him, place the meat and the unleavened bread on this rock and pour the broth over it. And Gideon did as he was told. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the bread with the tip of the staff in his hand and the fire flamed up from the rock and consumed all he had brought and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he cried out, O oh, sovereign Lord, I am doomed. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. It is all right, the Lord replied. Don't be afraid, you will not die. And Gideon built an altar to the Lord dear and named it Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord of peace. The altar remains in Ophrah in the land of uh, the clan of Abiza to this day. And this was the beginning of uh, a fearful young man who was stretching wheat uh, hiding from the Midianites, very much afraid. He knew his weakness. He knew their clan was the smallest clan and he was the weakest member of his family. Yet the Lord called him, O oh, mighty hero and mighty man, I am going to be with you. And we saw where in his uncertainty, he asked for a sign and God in his love and mercy gave him a sign. He went quickly and prepared an offering. And this is also a lesson to us, apart from the fire falling, you know, when we have an encounter, it is so important for us to show our gratitude to God and our love for Him by making haste and doing whatever it takes to put a sacrifice on the altar. And when that sacrifice was placed on the altar, the angel of the Lord touched it and the fire consumed that sacrifice. And there began the journey of Gideon. Gideon became a judge in Israel. Gideon became such a mighty man of war. He even was the person that went to battle with, I think it was 30,000 or 20,000 men. And the Lord kept trimming down that, trimming down, trimming down until it was 300. And Gideon won that battle with 300 men. And the Lord said that to him before. He said, you will fight and you will conquer the enemies as if the enemies are one man. And the end of Gideon, you can read it. You can read that account in the book of Judges. And Gideon even went on to have 70 sons and he became the leader, the ruler, a great warrior, all because uh, he obeyed the Lord. He made that sacrifice. Uh, he engaged in the word that the Lord gave to him. The fire fell and the rest is history. There is yet another account of a fire falling and that is in the same book of Judges chapter 13 and this has to do with Samson again um, and if you read on your own from 
Judges 6 where we just read right down to Judges 13 you would realize exactly what I said before the Israelites you know things became good with them and then they started going astray from God the enemies would oppress them and they would cry out to God and that has been that has been the story and again the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight so the Lord handed them over to the Philistines who oppressed them for 40 years in those days a man named Manoah from the tribe of Dan lived in the town of Zorah his wife was unable to become pregnant and they had no children the angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife and said even through even though you have been unable to have children you would soon become pregnant and give birth to a son so be careful you must not drink wine or any other alcoholic drink nor eat any forbidden food you will become pregnant and give birth to her son a son and his hair must never be cut for he will be dedicated to god as a Nazarite from birth he will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines the woman ran and told her husband a man of God appeared to me he looked like one of God's angels terrifying to see I didn't ask where he was from and he didn't tell me his name but he told me you will become pregnant and give birth to a son you must not drink wine or any other alcoholic drink nor eat any forbidden food for your son will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from the moment of his birth until the day of his death then Manoah prayed to the Lord saying Lord please let the man of God come back to us again and give us more instructions about this son who is to be born God answered Manoah's prayer and the angel of God appeared once again to his wife as she was sitting in the field but her husband Manoah was not with her so she quickly ran and told her husband the man who appeared to me the other day is here again Manoah ran back with his wife and asked are you the man who spoke to my wife the other day yes he replied I am so Manoah asked him when your words come true what kind of rules should govern the boy's life and work the angel of the Lord replied be sure your wife follows the instructions I gave her she must not eat grapes or raisins drink wine or any other alcoholic drink or eat any forbidden food then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord please stay here until we can prepare a young goat for you to eat so we see again they received the instructions they received the word from the Lord they had an encounter and their response is to offer a sacrifice so I'll just read that part again then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord please stay here until we can prepare a young goat for you to eat I will stay the angel of the Lord replied but I will not eat anything however you may prepare a burnt offering as a sacrifice to the Lord Manoah didn't realize it was the angel of the Lord then Manoah asked the angel of the Lord what is your name for when all this comes true we want to honor you why do you ask my name the angel of the Lord replied it is too wonderful for you to understand then Manoah took a young goat and a grain offering and offered it on a rock as a sacrifice to the Lord and as Manoah had as, and as Manoah and his wife watched the Lord did an amazing thing as the flames from the altar shot up towards the sky the angel of the Lord ascended in the fire where Manoah and his wife when Manoah and his wife saw this they fell with their faces to the ground the angel did not appear again to Manoah and his wife so we see in this here again a, a word came instruction came a prophetic word direction as to what to do how to go forward and in their obedience and in their love and their receiving of the word they offered a sacrifice and again as in the last account with Gideon we see as they prepare that sacrifice and put it on the altar they 
fire caught, the fire was burning well the fire didn't fall in this instance but they lit the fire to offer a burnt offering and then the angel of the Lord did wondrous and amazing things by dancing in that fire and ascending up to God we may not in this dispensation build a physical altar with stones or wood or any such thing we may not put a goat or a kid or bread or oil or any of those things on the altar but God wants us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice he became the lamb that was slain for us for our sins and in so doing we know as citizens of that heavenly kingdom it's our responsibility to offer sacrifices unto the Lord sacrifices of ourselves sacrifices of even our finances sacrifices of our time sacrifices of our obedience on the altar for the Lord and when we live that way and when we do such things the fire of the Lord will fall and will consume those burnt offerings as we present ourselves we must be persons on fire literally on fire for the Lord there is one more account I would like to share and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the lion in you that needs to roar and this uh, this account is with um, one of Gideon's sons but I'll take it from Judges chapter 9 reading from verse 7 jo Jotham was um, one of um, just to give you a little history of it he was one of Gideon's seventy sons and when they slew all the sons of Gideon he remained and Jotham gave them a parable when Jotham heard about this he climbed to the top of Mount Gerzim and shouted listen to me citizens of Shushem listen to me if you want God to listen to you once upon a time the trees decided to choose a king first they said to the olive tree be our king but the olive tree refused saying should I quit producing olive oil that blesses both God and people just to wave back and forth over the other trees so the olive tree said mm -mm, I stayed in my lane I doing what I was called to do then they said to the fig tree you be our king but the fig tree also refused saying should I quit producing my sweet fruit just to wave back and forth over the trees then they said to the grapevine you be our king but the grapevine also refused saying should I quit producing the wine that cheers both God and the people just to wave back and forth over the trees then all the trees finally turned to the thorn bush and said come you be our king and the thorn bush replied to the trees if you truly want to make me your king come and take shelter in my shade if not let fire come out from me and devour all the cedars of Lebanon so we have three accounts there of fire in continuation of what we spoke about last week and I want to begin to just whet your appetite a little bit for the next program that I am going to be doing that's for next week's program and that has to do with the lion on the inside of you and we saw that example with Gideon Gideon was acting like a, a sheep Gideon was so afraid he was so coward he was hiding he was everything but the lion and when he received the word of the Lord and when the fire came the lion on the inside of Gideon began to roar and I want to let us know that Jesus in the Bible is referred to both as the lamb of God that was slain and he was meek gentle and all those attributes of the lamb yet 
he is also referred to as the lion of the tribe of Judah and in total balance Jesus knew exactly when to be that lamb being led to the slaughter and also the great lion of the tribe of Judah that will roar and that can roar <laughs> I once visited a, um, a zoo, I think it was in either the Bronx or Brooklyn, I can't remember exactly where it was. And uh, while I was there, they, they had this lion and it was in its, not like how it is in Trinidad, but it was in a whole big wide space, you know, it had its own environment. And when that lion opened its mouth and roared, listen, the whole, <laughs> the whole zoo literally shook. And we know the lion to be the king of the woods. When that lion opens its mouth and roar, all the animals have to take shelter. As big as the elephant is, as tall as the giraffe is, all of the animals take shelter because that the roar of the lion alone and obviously it's not just the roar but it could rip you up to pieces so there is this lion on the inside of us that god wants to bring out he wants that lion to roar he wants that lion to roar, to literally roar. We live in a time and a day and a dispensation where the, the, the kingdoms of this world, they, you know, they, they are becoming so much more antichrist, so much against God, all different agendas. And it's almost as if there is an onslaught against the church and against the people of God. But saints, I want you to know today that yes, there is a time to be the lamb, the sweet, gentle lamb. But there is also a time where you got to open your mouth and you got to roar. And I say roar, lion, roar. There is that time, but it must be in love and against the enemies all right so we will continue more on that on that aspect of the lion coming out of the inside of you and we will do that in the following program but before i wrap up this program i i want to encourage you we dealt a lot with different fires and the, the holy spirit is represented at times uh, as water or as a dove but also the same holy spirit is represented as a fire and god is that consuming fire so i encourage you lay your sacrifices on the altar present your bodies as romans 12 says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present you have to do it I can't do it for you that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to the world the world systems and the thinking and the standards of the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We saw Gideon, we saw Manoah's son, Samson, and they all roared. They literally became what God ordained them to become, even though on the journey they had their setbacks. But Samson's his end, he did roar and he, he, he fought a lion, he, he, he did so much. You can read the account in the book of Judges. Allow that lion on the inside of you, allow the fire of God to consume you as that sacrifice to God. Father, I give you thanks today. I thank you for this 
program. God, I thank you for your word that went forth. And God, I pray that for all those who may be viewing this program today, that your fire will fall upon their sacrifice, God, and consume. God, that those who are timid and those who are shy and those who are hiding and those who are not coming into the place of their full purpose and destiny, God, that the lion on the inside of them will begin to roar and they will rise up and fulfill purpose and destiny. They will rise up and become all that you created them to become. God, I pray that this word, God, will be like fire in their system, creating a new person. God, that they will become, God, great like Gideon and great like Samson, O oh Father. All to your honor, your glory, and your praise. For we have prayed in no other name but the mighty and precious name of Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, but yet the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Viewers, this has been the outpouring for your roar. So I want you to roar like a lion as the fire falls. God bless you and have a great day. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour Be viewing the outpouring your for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour